Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Detective Ridiculous, where we talk about the only thing scarier than Warhammer, real life. But before we start, go ahead and check out the Patreon over at patreon.com slash ridiculous, where you can see great stuff like amazing posters, joining the Discord, being part of any bloopers if they happen, and other wonderful benefits. Patreon.com slash ridiculous. Also, I would recommend that you check out the Orchid 8 sale we have a big black friday sale going on right now if you buy two things or more you get 20 percent off your entire order orchidate.com check out the description i am being fast because we have an ad for today please roll it shy and then roll me into a burrito listen it's the holiday season and naturally when you're watching adept is ridiculous or detective ridiculous we are all about holiday cheer whether it's the horrifying world of warhammer or the horrifying world of real life but what's the most important thing and the thing that can keep your confidence high is shaving your balls look into my eyes look at them these are the eyes of a man who shaves his sack and a man who is jolly to do so with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 for this holiday season. This is actually the product I use for all that grooming kind of stuff because a man who is groomed is a man who is jolly, who is festive during this time of year. I am wearing red for a reason because Crumbus, Crimbus is an important time and Manscaped is there to make it even more important. Because sometimes when Mr. and Mrs. Claus wanna get down, wanna get dirty, wanna get dirty deeds done dirt cheap during the Christmas holiday season, shit should be smooth. Manscaped is the one-stop shop for all of your great grooming needs, including all kinds of various products and a nose trimmer, which I use practically daily. It is fantastic. Everything from body wash, two-in-one conditioner, deodorant. There is a, a, a ball, a ball deodorant. It exists. It is there. This thing even's got Rudolph's nose. It's not red, but you know, your balls won't be either because you get no nicks. Unlike Saint Nick delivering presents under the tray and you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code ADRIC, all caps, at manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com, coupon code ADRIC, all caps. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video and let's talk about real life. DK, what kind of burrito was I rolled into now that this ad is over? Uh, California burrito, dude, with the French fries and the carne asada and the... Mm, Ooh, avocado. Avocado, hell yeah. Pico de gallo. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I haven't you know, had a California actually, burrito in forever. I'm actually not a big fan of California burritos. I think the fries take away from it. The, the fries know, need to be like something really... Something about the fries just makes it all the more appealing to me because it's like... It's like a science experiment. It's like, you're not supposed to be here, but you are, and I appreciate you. I feel as if it's like, it needs to be crunchy, like really crunchy fries to add oh, that Oh yeah, you can't amount. have like soggy fries in there. That's that's a no-go. Yeah, because carne asada. Soggy, flaccid fries. Carne asada already has enough chew to it, you know? You don't need to add even yeah. more chew. Yeah. A good surf and turf is great. Like crunchy shrimp in there. Mm. Mm. Or a good breakfast mm. burrito. Oh, what's so with like, where you have like hash brown and yeah. Eggs, maybe some sausage. Whew. So are, uh, does this <sighs> have anything to do with our episode? Is there a burrito based murder? No, there's, there's not. Aww. There's no, there's no burritos at all in this. None? So, no, no burritos. How do I sign up for this show? Yeah, I know. But today on Detective Ridiculous, we're venturing into kind of new territory, you know, because um, this isn't really like an unsolved murder case. It's not like a grisly slaughter. Uh, nobody really went missing. But we're going to be dipping our toes into the world of cryptids. Oh, Which, uh, shit, like Loch Ness Monster and crap? Yes, yes. I was going to say, if we're going to be talking about cryptids, it might be helpful to know what a cryptid is. Uh, it's 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 like an animal or creature that uh, its existence has never been, like, proven. There's no evidence that they actually exist. But through folklore, stories, unproven sightings, or rumors, uh, people still believe that these mythical creatures exist. So, like you said, things like Bigfoot... Uh, the Jersey Devil, El Chupacabra, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, 
Uh, and of course, our topic for today, the Mothman of Point Pleasant. Holy shit, we're doing the Mothman? The Mothman of... There's no better place to start with cryptids than the Mothman. I mean, right? I guess you, you could start with Bigfoot, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you could start with a Bigfoot or a Loch Ness Monster or something. But, you know, this is like, you know, there's oh, something this... special about the Mothman. Well, yeah, because he was kind of a meme for a bit in the last couple of years. But, uh... Really? Well, just the, there was like Mothman jokes and the, there, there was some Mothman stuff. I remember more Mothman things in the past bit, but uh, I okay. honestly thought that like Loch Ness or Big... So, so a cryptid, when you, when you met, mentioned like Elk Chupacabra and stuff, I was thinking like, oh, uh, it's like the the Spanish or Spanish, Mexican, I don't remember which, um, folk tale of like La Llorona. That's not a cryptid. That's like a, a ghost. We're talking about like an animal Sighting yeah, like an thing. animal creature sighting thing. Not like a ghost or a spirit, I think. It's got to be like an animal thing. Yeah. Oh, like okay. Creature. All right. All right. All right. I'm I'm here. I'm here for it. Let's let's, let's right. find lamp. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Point Pleasant, West Virginia, uh, before we go into the legend of the Mothman. Uh, Point Pleasant is a small little blue collar town. Uh, it has a population of, like, less than 5,000 people. Uh, lots of farmlands, factories sitting right on the old Ohio River. Uh, not a whole lot going on in this little town of Point Pleasant. Just a tight-knit community where everybody probably knows everybody's name. Uh, the town does have a bit of a murky past with curses and heated battle with indigenous Shawnee tribes, uh, but we'll circle back to that a little later in the episode. So Point Pleasant, West Virginia is just this nice little sort of tight-knit community and just, you know, a little slice of America. So let's, let's talk about the Mothman now that we know about this tiny little town. We got to go all the way back to 1966 for the first reported sighting of this thing. Uh, now, there's a little conflict on which one of these sightings was the first, but they were both very early. Um, but they were from around November. Uh, there were a bunch of grave diggers doing what they do best and digging a grave at night. Out Wait, of they, nowhere. They weren't taxmen? Mm -hmm. No, they were just grave diggers digging wow. a grave. Would have never expected night. this. Just wouldn't I never know. have assumed Who? it. Shocked. Grave diggers digging a grave? Who knew? Shocked. And out of nowhere, they see this huge figure that starts flying through the air above them. Uh, they reported that it looked like a flying man. Uh, in that same month, there were also two couples that reported a similar sighting as they were driving near uh, what was known in Point Pleasant as the TNT area, uh, which was an old World War II munitions site near the town. They claimed that this massive winged thing with glowing red eyes, kind of like bike reflectors shining in the night, began to follow their car through the air and as they tried to speed away, this thing managed to keep up with them as their car was reaching a hundred miles per hour. They also noted that when it finally landed and scurried off towards the forest near the TNT area, it was very, very clumsy on its feet. When local newspapers reported on it, their headline read, Couple Sees Man-Sized Bird! Creature, something. That was the title what, of it. it. Is it is it like comma like bird comma creature something? It's couple couple sees man sized bird ellipses creature ellipses something. <laughs> Goody okay. <laughs> and in this article, uh, the two couples state that it was a bird or something, but definitely not a flying saucer. Uh, they uh, oh, were also, oh, thank God. Yeah, they, they, were, they were sure this was no flying saucer. This was like a man-bird thing. 
Uh, they were also pretty naturally hesitant to come forward uh, because they were like, man, this sounds crazy. Like, we sound insane. But since there were two couples at some, since there were four people that had seen it, they were like, okay, we can come forward. There's four of us. I mean, if it was just one of us, maybe it'd sound crazy, but four of us, we gotta say something. Uh, they also made sure to reiterate that they had not been drinking or under the influence of anything when they saw this creature with a near 10-foot wingspan and was also apparently afraid of the light. Uh, in the article, they said, It was like a man with wings, but not like something you'd see on TV or in a monster movie. Uh, they also said it was maybe what you'd visualize as an angel to describe this thing oh but with blazing red eyes yeah but with blazing glowing fierce red eyes yes what was our sanguineous quote where he's like man you ever seen an angel that have a wing dipped in blood that's insert <laughs> insert quote here it was it was the mothman mothman he's he's, he's time traveling from 40k yep so literally that same night some 90 miles away, according to sources, uh, the Mothman would make another appearance. A building contractor named Newell Partridge was relaxing and watching some good old TV at around 10.30 p.m. At 10.30 p.m., his television abruptly cuts out and starts to stream, strangely hum and buzz. Uh, some sources say there were some weird patterns that also started playing across his uh, television screen. Uh, his German shepherd named Bandit suddenly takes off out the door and into the front, uh, front yard. Uh, chasing after his dog uh, and calling out his name, Newell notices two red eyes that are circling around the front yard, just circling and circling almost. I think he said it was almost like a siren. So, uh, cir like circling, like the two two red eyes, like 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 in a in a circle. Like yeah, they're circling be, if around it, his front house. If he turned around, obviously, like the eyes would go away because. They're around, but huh? That's, yeah, huh. Like, it's, it's like flying up and like up and down in the air, circling. Oh, it's, just... it's flying in circles. It's making a circular flying pattern. Oh, in the like just... a vulture kind of circle. Yes, like a oh, vulture okay. kind of thing. Gotcha. Yep. Now I've seen a couple sources <clears throat> conflict about what he did next. Uh, I think one video had an interview with him where he said he tried calling his dog Bandit back, um, but when Bandit didn't come back, he was just like, "Well, I'm gonna go back inside, sleep this off, and just you know, this is just some weird thing that happened. Bandit'll find his way home, and I'm just gonna put this out of my mind, move on, head my ass to bed." What an asshole! He left his dog out overnight. <laughs> I apparently he sees, a, he sees a, a flying motherfucker in the sky with double red eyes, and he's like, "Ah, the dog will take care of it. It'll be fine. What could it possibly be?" This guy is a shitter. He shits everywhere. Uh, but I saw another source say that he went back into his house looking for his gun, but then found himself too goddamn terrified of whatever that thing was to go back outside and he decided to stay huddled up in his bed and sleep with his gun at his bedside. Okay, that's slightly better, but still. Yeah. Regardless, the German Shepherd Bandit was never seen again. No, motherfucker! You son of a bitch! He was never seen again. A source did say that apparently when Newell went outside the next morning to check, he found Bandit's paw prints, and they looked as if Bandit had been running around in a circle, almost like he was chasing his tail, but there was no sign of Bandit. There was no blood trail, there was no body, nothing. I'm very Naturally, upset with this man. I know. Poor Bandit. Poor Bandit. Poor Bandit. Uh, now, naturally, uh, once the media started printing sightings of the Mothman, people started flooding into Point Pleasant looking for either evidence of it or to try and kill it if they could find it because it was <laughs> terrorizing the town of Point Pleasant. And because it was the 60s, and it was like, well, but get our guns. West Virginia, right? 
Yeah, West Virginia. They were going hunting. Yep, yeah, gonna go hunting, kill ourselves a mothman, get rich. Get rich. Uh, I recall also reading or hearing somewhere somewhere that there were actually like really large search parties that would go into the TNT and even the forests around the TNT area with like legit rifles looking to kill the mothman. Um, there were even some people that thought that the Mothman might have actually been an alien uh, because the sightings actually coincided with numerous UFO sightings in Point Pleasant at the time. Uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, there were well over a hundred sightings of the Mothman and actually significantly more because there were so many people that were like that first couple that were like, yo, we sound crazy. Like, we can't say anything. Like, nobody's going to believe us. And then there are some people that were like, well, this thing might be, like, cursed. Like, I'm not going to report this. I'm just going to pretend like this never happened. So, Mothman is picking up some steam. And, you know, um, while it may seem like the Mothman only appears at night, there was one sighting that happened in the middle of the day. Well, at around 10.30 in the morning in broad daylight. Woman named Connie Carpenter had reported that she saw a winged man when she was driving home from church on November 27, 1966, just outside New Haven, West Virginia. At first, she thought that the gray figure was just a man, kind of just standing on the side of the road, waiting for a ride or something. But then wings sprouted from its back, and it leapt straight up in the air and started to dive down towards her. While naturally horrified by this, uh, Connie couldn't take her eyes off the creature's glowing, glaring red eyes. Uh, Connie is said to have reported that the creature's eyes had some sort of hypnotic effect on her, and she couldn't stop focusing on them. As Connie absolutely gunned the accelerator, as anyone would, uh, the creature flew overhead and flew off, and Connie never saw it again. Connie, however... Her eyes became so red, and they got so swollen afterwards that they were almost completely shut. That is and, weird. Yep. And this also kind of ties back into the UFO alien theory, uh, because this phenomenon had actually been seen by numerous people who claimed to witness UFO sightings. Um, in a couple of articles, I saw it referred to as eye burn, where like a bright ultraviolet light, supposedly from like a UFO or some extraordinary event, could cause these symptoms and could cause this uh, eye irritation, the swollen eye problems and stuff like that in the aftermath. So people are thinking, hey, Mothman, this thing might actually be an alien. However... I couldn't find any other reported sightings, like anybody that had seen the Mothman, that also had this eye problem, or the eye burn. Uh, which is kind of strange, since anybody that sees the Mothman is like, yeah, I couldn't stop looking at the glowing red eyes. So Right, but like, eye burn, so, hmm, it's similar to UV light, you said? Yeah, it's like a, it's like just a just bright unnatural light, like a UV that just fucks your but this eyes. This was just... she. She saw this thing in the day, though, right? Yeah, she saw it in the middle of the day. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah. I wonder if she's she's the only one because she stared at the at the Mothman and the Mothman flew away. And she couldn't stop staring. And it was just the sun. Might have been the sun. Like, ah! <laughs> she was looking up. Ah, Jesus! She looked at it too long and. That's an eye burn. That's an eye burn. So, up until this point, the Mothman seems fairly harmless. Maybe a little scary because it's a giant humanoid with wings and fiery glowing red eyes and it flies around at 100 miles an hour. But it hasn't really hurt anyone except for maybe, you know, poor, poor Bandit. And 
it might have fucked up Connie's eyes. Uh, but things would change with how people looked at the Mothman on December 15th, 1967. There was a bridge in Point Pleasant called the Silver Bridge that collapsed and killed 46 people. Holy shit. Yep, it was this old bridge, and it just, you know, it, yes. it, it wasn't made for modern cars. It was made way back in the day for old school cars, and it just, uh, it also uh, didn't have a lot of redundancies on it. So if, like, one system on this bridge failed, everything failed. Uh, so oh, it man. just, it was a disaster. It just went down and took everyone with it, basically? Pretty much, unfortunately. God damn, um, all right. And many people believed that the incident occurred because of the Mothman sightings that had happened recently, as if the creature was an omen of bad things to come. It was the harbinger of doom. Oh, okay. But again, not, not, not the Mothman fucked up the bridge, more of like the Mothman as a warning. Yes, the Mothman was bringing warning of doom and it's the herald of destruction. It became popular opinion that Mothman sightings were uh, a sign that disaster was coming. Uh, people have claimed to have seen uh, the Mothman before Chernobyl, uh, before the awful tsunami in Japan that wiped out the uh, Fukushima reactor. Um, I believe there was an apartment bombing in Russia that people saw the Mothman, and even 9-11. People are claiming they saw the Mothman before 9-11, and it was the oh. Herald. Oh no, Mothman. Mothman burned. A second moth has hit the tower, Mr. Bush. Yeah. But the, and then there was also the popularity of the Mothman Prophecies book and movie, uh, which also pretty much painted Mothman in this manner as sort of like this mythical creature. It's the harbinger of disaster and doom. Uh, I think in the movie, the main character's wife sees the Mothman and then she dies. Um, so When was this movie made? 2001? Oh, recent. Fairly recent, the the book and movie. I think it was 2000, 2001 was the movie. The book was was before. I'm not sure when the book was written, to be fair. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. But the movie was in, in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Though at the, time, uh, at the time of the collapse of the Silver Bridge, that pretty much killed, killed... Uh, the locals' interest or desire to indulge in the Mothman legend. Uh, this absolutely horrible tragedy had just occurred, the town was grieving, and it just, it didn't seem like this stupid urban legend was something anyone should waste their time on. You know, we have more important things to do, more important things to grieve, and this urban legend is just whatever. So well, I'm imagining superstition hit into it too, where it's like, no more talking about the Mothman. This has happened because of the Mothman. Oh, yeah, that could be too. You know, even people that maybe did believe in it were just like, oh, dude, like, let's not even talk about it because who knows what could happen if... Uh, the, but... the Mothman did this to us because we were trying to seek it out. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is punishment for, uh, for trying to find him. Yep. Um, so, like, UFO sightings, talks of government involvement, because there were people that thought there was, like, um, uh, I saw a couple sources literally called them the MIB, like, men in black, like, government agents that were wandering around doing some shady stuff in Point Pleasant. Um, and even just Mothman sightings in general, they all just seemed to kind of slowly fade away. Like, nobody wanted to talk about that anymore, for whatever reason. But... In 2002, the Mothman legacy would be sort of revived. Uh, there weren't, like, any new sightings or anything like that, uh, in Point Pleasant anyway, uh, but Point Pleasant would hold its first annual Mothman Festival to commemorate the first sighting of the cryptid in 1966 and celebrate the town's storied history. 
granted, it was more of a way to try to get tourism up and convince people uh -huh. to visit Point Pleasant and spend money, but still! And man, Point Pleasant really, really leaned into the whole Mothman thing from that point on. Um, there's this really awkward-looking 12-foot statue of Mothman, big silver statue with beaming red eyes, smack dab in the middle of Point Pleasant. Should I just put a picture up of it? Look at that thing. Oh Look my god. It. Oh my good god. Is he have chest hair? Uh, he, he, he has like a 12... Shy, show him the picture of the Mothman's ass. Uh, he's, he's got to see it. Huge... He's shredded he's to shredded. shit. Shredded. And he he's looks got like... He's, like, he's got like, like curly-ass chest hair. Look at those toned glutes. Look at him. Uh, Look at him. Amazing. Mothman oh works god. out. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Mothman works out. Are you sure the, the the furries are going hard with this? <laughs> but it looks like it's straight out of like Godzilla or Ultraman. Um, Take him to <laughs> Ultramar. <laughs> there's there's also a Mothman museum. Uh, there is a Mothman cafe where you can buy Mothman droppings. Uh, uh, which, uh which are just black candy coated chocolates. Um, there's a pizza joint that makes a Mothman pizza where the toppings on the pizza are artistically placed to look like a moth. And it seems like you can buy Mothman merch on just about every goddamn corner of Point Pleasant. I mean, it's basically become the official mascot of Point Pleasant. They might as well put this thing on their flag. Because everyone who was really upset by it is dead now, or very yeah. old, and now yeah. this is a good way to get a shitload of tourism. Yeah, because why else would you go to Point Pleasant? Like, it's this small little town that doesn't really have a lot going on to it. Now it's like, hey, that's where Mothman was, and people will come and spend their money and, you know. Oh, thank God. The Bahamas cringe. Mothman <laughs> extremely based. Thank based. goodness. And... Business seems to be booming because according to the wiki, uh, the festival organizer Jeff Wamsley uh, has apparently said that the annual attendance for the Mothman Festival is somewhere between 10 to 12,000 people a year. Wow. So a couple, couple, couple people show up. Well, it's a, it's a lot to, to make your way out to bumfuck nowhere, West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit, a little bit, 10 to 12,000. Okay, so now that we've got sort of a really quick sort of brief rundown of the Mothman's history, what exactly could the Mothman actually be? Uh, is it actually some kind of half-man, half-winged demon hybrid? Is it an alien from outer space that visited our world? Or maybe... Uh, since it was near the TNT area where munitions were held, and uh, those munitions obviously leaked some toxic materials into the land, people suggested that maybe it was like some sort of deformed, mutated animal. Uh, it's also been suggested that maybe... Maybe the Mothman was completely made up. That the sightings were just a way to put Point Pleasant on the map to get people talking and to get people to come to Point Pleasant. Uh, there was a theory that um, people thought that after that initial Mothman sighting, there was one prankster that was just dressing up like a Mothman to scare people. And then when he finally gave up and stopped the prank, people just kept seeing it because, you know, they were kind of seeing what they wanted to see. Pretty pretty classic cryptid uh, questions regarding that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also been suggested that what the people of Point Pleasant actually saw was a sand hill crane. There was a professor at West Virginia University back in 1966. Uh, his name was Dr. Robert L. Smith. And he was specifically the Associate Professor of Wildlife Biology. According to him, all of the sightings and descriptions matched up almost perfectly 
with a sandhill crane. Uh, it stands about five feet tall. It has around a seven to 10 foot wingspan, and it has this bright red flesh around its eyes that would probably look like glowing red eyes if you shined a bright light on them. Uh, he even goes on to say that somebody who has never seen something like the Sandhill Crane before could easily get the impression that it is a man. Car lights would cause the bare skin to reflect as big circles around the eyes. There's even some explanation to what Newell Patridge uh, might have heard in his sighting, and potentially what happened to poor little bandit. So when Newell heard the humming and the buzzing, uh, he could have been hearing the cry of this crane. Uh, other sightings had reported sort of an eerie, loud cry, which also matches up with uh, the sort of weird, loud, high-pitched cry of the Sandhill Crane, uh, which Dr. Smith referred to as a taunting trumpet from the underworld, which I think is a <laughs> little dramatic. No, no, but... that's incredible. I want to refer to things as taunting trumpets from the underworld from the now on. Yeah, yeah, the taunting trumpet from the underworld. And uh, the good doctor also said that the Sandhill Crane is normally harmless if left alone, but if it feels like it's in danger, it has a razor-sharp beak that it will use to defend itself. In the article I found, it specifically states that the Sandhill Crane has hurt and killed many a hunting dog with it. Wow, so, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a crazy peak. So it could be that night that Newell Patridge saw those glowing red eyes, that it was a sandhill crane that was kind of humming and buzzing around his property. Bandit hears a bird and boom, goes into hunting mode to try and catch it. Maybe chases it around in circles before the crane gets the better of it with its deadly beak. And sadly, no more bandit. But if that is the case, why didn't Newell ever find Bandit's body, or some kind of blood trail, or any evidence that Bandit had been attacked? Uh, Dr. Smith also said that the flight speed of the Sandhill Crane was nowhere near 100 miles an hour. So what the hell was keeping up with those cars in the earlier sightings if the crane couldn't reach those speeds? Uh, also, so I... I know that they that that the crane has like those red circles around its eyes, but I don't know. Like those don't look like they would shine that brightly. Like I guess maybe the reflection of its eyes would maybe cause that, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like that fiery glowing, you know, thing that people said was like glowing in the dark. So, and add to that. Uh, turns out that Dr. Smith also said that it was probably one Sandhill crane that was stopping in Point Pleasant while it was migrating south. Just one. I can't believe that just one Sandhill crane was responsible for like over a hundred reporting sightings, reported sightings, like one crane that was stopping off. Yeah, there's, there's like a certain migrating. level, a certain level of assumption you have to make that like. A certain percentage of the sightings you, you probably will assume is uh, people kind of getting up in the hype and things like that. Oh, they yes. want to certainly, but, certainly, certainly. But like, you can take a pretty good percentage out of that, but you can't take like a lot of it. You can yeah. you can bring it down low, but you can't bring it down low enough to where it's uh, the single crane. The, the right? crane. I'm not gonna lie. Shy, Shy's photo of that crane in the black and white is fucking horrifying. Oh yes, that, that is absolutely horrifying. Certainly, absolutely certainly. terrifying. It, it does not. I, I don't think the face really gives away the red eyes. It's not, also yeah. it's not eyes. It's just a big ball on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they said it was glowing red eyes, and there was uh, uh, Connie saw it in the middle of the day. They were glowing. So, uh, yeah, I also really, yeah, really I really enjoy the still. um. I really enjoy the picture of, of the Mothman killing the crane. That's very funny. <laughs> yeah, that is actually. It's really, like really it's really not funny. a crane, fucker. Look, <laughs> I got him. I got it's him. A, also, I see that Mothman is very often depicted in, in, in dark colors. Is that because it's always seen at night, or is that actually because they think it has dark 
feathers and dark skin? I would assume it's because it's always seen at nighttime. Uh, most people say it looks like a gray figure if they're going to represent it with colors. Gr just a gray figure that's a 10-foot wingspan and uh, glowing red eyes. Mm, that's well, that's gray, usually how they describe it. Gray, gray absolutely uh, works when it comes to the, the bird. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Like that that totally works gray wise, but Oh yeah, you could definitely yeah. see that as gray, sure. I guess one could ar hmm, I guess one could argue that maybe it, it could be like two birds that were flying overhead and that's why it looked like maybe? eyes, but do they, they don't put travel do they travel in packs at all? Like like pairs? I mean, th there's that one picture Shy posted where they're all together and birds of a feather flock together, so I, That's I would just a so? say. That's just a saying. Birds Shut aren't up. real. <laughs> Birds aren't real. Wait, Fallout 76 has Mothman? Yeah, and it looks so cool. Wow, I thought, it's never great. mind. I thought Fallout 76 was trash. This is real. This is real. This is, this is a real good video game now. Big boy gaming hours. Thank you, Todd there Howard. Is, there is one more interesting tale that sort of has relevance to the Mothman legend. And it involves a battle that took place way back on October 10th, 1774. It was called the Battle at Point Pleasant, and it was between the Virginia Militia and the Shawnee and Mingo Indigenous Tribes. Uh, it was, as many wars are, a land dispute. Uh, there had been a treaty laid out with the Iroquois tribe that their lands to the south uh, of the Ohio River would be the Virginia militias. Problem was, no one decided to consult with the Shawnee tribes about this treaty and that their lands would suddenly belong to the Virginia militia. Uh, actually, I imagine the Americans were very kind and talked this through, right? <laughs> <laughs> Course. Yeah. America! <laughs> yeah, but obviously the Shawnee were not about to give up their lands for a treaty that they knew nothing about. So, while they fought very, very bravely, uh, the Shawnee were unfortunately forced to retreat from the militia after they were flanked, uh, and it would be the Shawnee leader, Chief Cornstalk, who would eventually negotiate a treaty uh, with the Virginia militia to stop the fighting. I think the Virginia militia did actually end up getting the land. Um, so, uh, in 1777, uh, Cornstalk would make a diplomatic visit to an American fort that was built on modern-day Point Pleasant. However, he and his two sons were taken into custody by a soldier who thought he was taking the initiative by capturing these three Native Americans. So they were all imprisoned in this fort. Um, and then later on, there was an American soldier. I think they were stationed at that same fort. Um, but this soldier was murdered by an unknown native. And so in retaliation, Cornstalk and his two sons were brutally executed. No. Uh, I think I think a soldier kind of surprised them and just shot him with a rifle while they were being held prisoner. Sort of a, oh my god, I need retaliation. Um, and though the murder of Cornstalk and his sons was condemned by their commanding officer, the commanding officer even called the guilty party vile assassins, none of their fellow soldiers would testify against their fellow man, and the murders went completely unpunished. Now, well, that's something, 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 American Indian tribe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Now, the reason I tell you this story uh, is because there was this really old, like, cabinet or closet or some kind of chest of drawers that was uncovered in Point Pleasant a long time ago. Uh, and inside of this cabinet, closet, chest of drawers, whatever, uh, there was a script. Uh, it was a play that reenacted the Battle of Point Pleasant and Cornstalk's unfortunate execution. And in this play, uh, Cornstalk has a... Before he dies, 
he is said to have cursed Point Pleasant for 200 years with his dying breath. So a lot of people think that Cornstalk's curse is actually Mothman, or possibly is Mothman, because a lot of bad shit has happened in Point Pleasant. There's been a lot of flooding, there was the Silver Bridge, there's the Mothman, there's that creepy TNT area. So is all of this, could it all be because Cornstalk put a 200-year curse on Point Pleasant and Mothman is a symbol of this curse and is still haunting and bringing calamity to Point Pleasant after all this time. Might sound spooky and interesting, but uh, this curse of Cornstalk has all but been debunked. Uh, every historian that has heard this tale pretty much says the same thing. It's a work of fiction to make that play sound more exciting and keep it interesting and get people talking. Um, historians also note that Cornstalk was killed, uh, like we said, rather suddenly with a gunshot, with a rifle, um, and that if someone was surprised and shot like that, they probably wouldn't have the strength to utter a monologue of a curse. Um, and aside from this fictional play, there was also literally no other accounts of this supposed curse ever existing or being recorded. So, well, the you, curse, know, you know, you never seen a you never seen a dead man's trigger curse. You ever, you know, you never you never seen that. No, no, I never seen that. Never seen no? that. No. Oh, too bad. All right, so it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out one day. But that's that's the Mothman, Bricky. Are you are you convinced? Do you believe in the Mothman? Do you believe that he's a herald of destruction, uh, uh, an alien, uh, a crane, a mutated crane, or or what? What what do you what do you an industrial you crane? An industrial crane? Yeah. Mm, 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 yep, yeah, yeah. Which kind of crane? It has to be one version of crane. Yeah, yeah. Shy ones, do you think it's a bird, mass hysteria, or a mutant? Because there are people that are like, oh, yeah, it kind of fits what some people see as their sleep paralysis demon. So a lot of people might just be, it's just, it's just you know, mass hysteria. They're just seeing what they want to see. I mean, naturally, most of the time, um, I mean, I don't, I don't believe mutant stuff because mutations are not, are not what they always look like in the movies. Mutations <laughs> the are, books. are, <laughs> mutations are, are often very, very, uh, malignant and, yeah. uh, and, and very bad. And, and you mm -hmm. just, you, you don't grow wings. You, you grow the ones to be on bed rest for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the yeah, radiation doesn't always make a, a lizard into Godzilla. The the bird in mass hysteria, you know this 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 one seems like out of the cryptid stuff. I mean, I didn't know what a cryptid really was before, but now that you have defined it, uh, has the most, like kind of, put play play, I don't know. It, it's the most convincing. The most to it? Yeah, it's okay. the most convincing. It's the most convincing okay. out of all the options out there, um, because like Loch Ness monster to me. It, it, it's just it's like a thing coming out of the water like i, I don't know whatever bigfoot looks <laughs> like true. a bigfoot's a hairy dude mothman is a bit more out there but it's also yeah. i i'm curious about stuff because like crane is a good theory um mm -hmm. but not quite good enough mass hysteria is often the right answer but Could also sure. but also not quite good enough um and there's a lot of in between things going on there. I like I, I like the museum. I want to go visit it. <laughs> it's so I what they have in that museum. <laughs> I, I like the image where it's like the world's only Mothman museum, and the Mothman drawing behind the lady is jacked out of his mind, <laughs> out of his, his brain. <laughs> his chest. He's got giant tits for fucking pecs. There. It's, oh it's yeah. So, he's ripped man he is absolutely swole you gotta have I think, the, you know you gotta you gotta work those obliques you know when you're flapping those wings but but no honestly it's a it's kind of a fun one i i kind of don't want to be proven right or wrong this is yeah, the, the, as, the as mystery far as the, is what makes it so fun right yeah the as far as folklore tale it's it's just silly enough to where it's 
Like, it's just goofy enough, but uh, but also not. Like, yeah. I love the fact that it, it's if it's they take it too seriously, then I, I believe people are just making shit up and tryharding. If it's too goofy, I'm like, eh, shut up. But yeah. it's just enough in between. It's like it's like if you go like watch a ghost hunting show. Like if someone goes to the camera and goes like as a fucking ghost, I'm like, okay, whatever. And and if someone like pretends to hear something, and that's it, I'm also like, whatever. But if like a chair just slightly screeches across the floor, like half an Terrifying. inch, yeah. that that's it. I'm like, oh, I, like that that starts to freak me out. Like it has to be oh, the sure. right the right level. Mm -hmm. And it's oh, uh, oh Shy yeah. said. Uh... Shy personally does not buy the theory that they tried to make the town famous because OG people were very reluctant to talk about it. Uh, they went to the cops with real reports, and after the bridge collapsed, it was more of a tragedy for them if they think they saw, if they think something that day for real. But what was, I'm not sure if I had to choose a freak giant owl. That's true. Could be, could be a giant owl. I'm, I, I also tend to think it's some. I, I, I would like some unfound type of like creature, you know. I I, I could go with that. I could go with that. You yeah, know, I nobody mean, nobody knows I, what the hell it is. It's 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 scared, so of course it's swooping around, being kind of crazy because it's you know. I I must say the Mothman. Um, it looks more like an owl than it does a crane by far. Oh. Um, just because of the way eyes look on an owl, similarly mm -hmm. to a moth. You know yeah. how it's all directly in one. It, it looks straight ahead, and the eyes are quite large. Oh yeah, um, definitely. And also, you know, like I mean, I don't know how how the red eye phenomenon occurs when it comes to cameras. But I don't know if something along the lines of like old school headlights, or just lights on cars general, or something. Yeah. And and also, I don't buy the town famous thing either because after the bridge collapsed, people didn't want to fucking talk about it at all. Oh yeah, yeah. If if they wanted to make the town famous, they well. Might seem a little cheeky and in poor taste to be like, "Hey guys, the bridge collapsed. Come celebrate the Mothman." That yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't particularly like that one because I think they all like if, if a town were five thousand and the bridge collapsed and killed forty-seven. There's a lot of people who are degrees to those people who died. Yeah, you know, like it's not going to be hard to find a decent amount of um of genuine family members there that are probably quite sad. Oh yeah. Funny story about the Mothman name. Is this is this so the only thing I saw about the Mothman name um was that it was in large part due to how popular Batman was at the time, the the detective comics and Batman was fighting something uh was, he was fighting like the killer moth and because of how popular that was people saw the killer moth and then and they didn't i don't know why they didn't call it the killer moth they just called it the mothman yeah so, <laughs> so oh so because so they called him originally batman but then batman was a thing so it was like don't fucking call him batman call him mothman yeah because he was he That's... was fighting the killer moth too and hey that looks like a moth and yeah but again mothman sounds better than than Batman and, and better than Killer Moth because then it's taking itself too seriously. Mothman is just Mothman is, is just it's perfect just enough. for a cryptid name. It's just perfect, yeah. Mm. But that's the Mothman of Point Pleasant. That's what I that, got. It's a it's a it's a fun little one. I I, I want to believe. I I don't need to myself, but I I like the I like the um. You know, I, I, sit, I sit back with you, popcorn. Stuff's happening, you know? I sit back with popcorn. And I'm like, ha! This is funny. This is yeah, good. I like this. Good one. This is yeah. fun. Uh, I I do like the uh, I want to believe. Um, oh crap! Uh, what was it again? X Files. The, um, thank you, X Files. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, the little picture of the UFO, the the classic wall art. Yeah, need to need to need to go and uh, buy some Mothman droppings. Bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna layer myself in that shit. I'm gonna gonna get into a bed, <laughs> and and just and just drown myself in Mothman droppings. You just want to bat. You just want to get into a bathtub full of Mothman droppings. If they can if they can make give me an Among Us pizza, <laughs> I can get a Mothman pizza, and I'm gonna yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, you can. It. You can. Yeah. They, yeah. they they put little olives and little I think pepperoncinis to make the eyes look kind of red. Little peppers and 
A lot of, I think they use mushrooms to make the wings, you know? BuzzFeed went there and, and saw all the different things, and yeah, you can... But we did it. The Mothman. Oh, the Mothman. Oh, the thanks Mothman. for teaching me plus. about the Mothman. I, I didn't actually know about... I, I mean, I knew of the Mothman. We've all... I, I, of course yeah, we, I knew we've about all the heard Mothman. of the Mothman, but... Eh. You know, you never go delving for details. And we here at Detective Ridiculous just love teaching you about things that might show up on Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> we we here <laughs> at Detective Ridiculous love t uh, just giving you Mothman droppings. Mm -hmm. they, it's an they integral say, part of American folklore, says Shy. They say, they say that, they're, that white people have no culture. <laughs> I disagree. Mothman. Yeah. Yeah, next time someone tells you America has no culture, be like, yeah, what about the Mothman? Let's uh, get Take us home, here. DK. Oh. Take us back to the Moth... Wait, no. <clears throat> Country uh, roads. Country roads. Take me take home. Take me home. To End the place. <laughs> I belong. And the episode, Jai. West Virginia. Mountain, Mountain Mama. Mama. Take me home. Take me home.